The design of stirrups to take the shear forces is one of the most important steps in the design of a concrete beam, but it's also one of the most misunderstood. And the reason is that there are multiple code limitations in the design, and it's also time consuming. Sometimes the stirrups are specified following typical details. This may lead to a very conservative design, or what is worse, to a non conservative design. So, is there a way to design the stirrups quickly and still comply with the code provisions? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design the stirrups in a continuous concrete beam using as deep concrete, complying with all the code requirements in just a few minutes. The design will save you a lot of time and effort. Let's get started. When you open as deep concrete and create a calculation for a beam design, you see this template. I have prepared an example. It's a continuous beam, three spans, first span 22 feet, second span 25 feet, third span 19 feet. I have also added some gravity loads, dead and live, both uh, uniform and concentrated loads, as shown here in the diagrams tab. As the concrete generates the shear and moment diagrams immediately, when you add a load or change something in the geometry, the diagram updates immediately, so you have always the latest version of the shear and the moment diagrams. A great feature in the program is that you can see the design shear strength superimposed to the uh, shear diagram for comparison purposes. When you check this box, the software shows immediately the design shear strength. The design shear strength has two components. One is the component due to the concrete itself, which is this green area, and the second part is the portion due to the stirrups. The first component is constant due to the concrete, but the second component is variable. That depends on the area of the steel in the, in the stirrups and also depends on the spacing of the stirrups. If you click on the reinforcement tab and go to the stirrups tab, you can specify here the number of stirrups at both ends and at the center of each span. You can specify the number of stirrups, the size of the stirrups, and also the spacing of the stirrups. So you can specify manually the number and the spacing of the stirrups along the beam. However, as if concrete has a feature called Beam Design Manager, when you click on this button here, this is the Beam Design Manager. Here you can specify, in the case of the stirrup, you can specify the stirrup size, and you can specify the number of legs per stirrup. Usually it's number three and uh, two, two legs, but can be different, uh, different numbers. With this piece of information, the software can design the stirrups along the beam. When you click Design, the program immediately calculates the number of stirrups and the spacing to comply with the code requirements. Let's focus on the second span. Basically, the program calculates the required stirrups at the end of the span, at a distance d from the face of the column. In this case, the support length is 24 inches. So this number represents the shear at a distance d from the support face. The program calculates the required stirrups to take this shear and extends those spacing up to the point where the shear is equal to phi vc, which is this green area. The same occurs at the other end. Between these two points, the program uses the minimum reinforcement steel. If we focus on the second span in larger scale, we can see clearly that the program extends the required stirrups up to the point where the shear is equal to phi vc. At the other end, same. The program calculates the required stirrups and extends that, is, that is spacing up to the point where uh, BU is equal to, to phi VC. And at the center, the program uses the minimum steel reinforcement. This is conservative because probably at the, at the center of the, of the span, there will be an area where uh, the stirrups are not required. But in practice, some stirrups will be placed anyway in that area to hold the longitudinal rebars. 
So the program uses the minimum shear steel area along the beam. If we go to the at a glance tab, we can see numerically that the ratio is, uh, you know, 1.0. It's very close to the limit. So we may want to reduce a little bit the spacing to reduce also the ratio in, in, in some areas. For example, in this region here, it's very close to what is required and also there. So if we go to the reinforcement tab, the steer up tab, we go to the span number two at the beginning, at the left, is 6.4. Maybe we can reduce to 6.0, a close number, so we have a little bit more capacity there. And that is reflected also just there is 0.97. We go to the first span at the right, which is this one. It's also very close. Let's go to the first span. At the end is 8.2. Let's see 8.0 so that we can have a little bit more capacity there. And now the ratio is 0.99, so it's, 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 it's okay. And we can do the same in the third span as well. So the idea is that you can modify whatever you want in the program and comply with the code requirements. For example, if you don't want to use the minimum steel area along the beam, but just not to use any, any stirrups or a longer spacing of stirrups in the center where are, they are not required, you can do that as well. And the program will check it. If you go to the contents tab, scroll down a little bit to, to the shear area. In this table, you can see the shear forces per load combination. These are the shears at the supports. And in the table below, you can see the shear strength. You can see FVN, also the minimum steel area requirements. And here are the maximum spacings in uh, each span at both ends and also at the center of the span. So numerically, you can check what is wrong or what is passing. For example, here we, we can see there are two deficiencies. And that occurs in the third span. So we can go to the third span now. Probably add a little bit more capacity there. It's, it's too tight. Go to the third span at the, at the left. 5.8. Let's see 5. So we have more capacity now there. So the numbers should, should match now. So everything is passing in, in at a glance. We will go to condens and everything is passing now for all load combinations. Also, all the spacings are met here. Everything is okay. So we can see how easy it is to design the stirrups in as deep concrete now with this new feature. First of all, you can see both components of the shear strength. You can see the concrete component, FBC, and you can see the component due to the stirrups, FBS. Graphically, we can see here immediately that the red area uh, representing the shear is inside the blue area representing the capacity. But also we need to make sure that we comply with the spacing limitations. That's why you go to, to the tables and you can see that it's also passing all these requirements. So the design is adequate as it is right now. In summary, we have added this support length to the program where you can specify the length of the support. That determines the shear at a distance D from the uh, support phase. With that information, the program calculates the shear requirements and extends that, that spacing up to the point where the shear v, VU is equal to VVC. From there on, to the center of the span, uh, the program calculates the shear minimum requirements. All these can be modified as required if, if the user wants to, to change it here in the reinforcement tab. The program also generates an image with the beam elevation showing the reinforcement, including the stirrups. So this is a very useful tool to design the stirrups in a concrete beam 
in uh, as deep concrete please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications of future videos like this one thank you very much for your attention